Hey everybody and welcome back to Mission Control on another, uh, still kind of a gloomy afternoon here in Denver, Colorado, but uh, we're going to have some fun anyways, hopefully it's nice wherever you happen to be. Uh, today on the stream I have with us uh, Mr. Sam Perry. Say hello Sam. Hello Sam, I just about made it in. Yes, yes, that was our technical issue, your internet decided to go left field on you, but <laughs> we got it back right before we started at least, and that's that the part that matters. Close. Yes, yes. <laughs> So uh, what we were going to talk about today was uh, Synergy and some use cases uh, for Synergy that don't necessarily involve light map, uh, which, of course, is the big bang, whiz bang feature of uh, Synergy. But there is more to it that is kind of handy uh, to have. Uh, it's kind of what we talked about this morning, and you asked me a bunch of questions, and I decided I'm going to turn the tables and do the same to you uh, this afternoon. Oh, Yes. Uh, it's going to so, be fun. Yes, and of course, as always, <laughs> if you guys have questions out there in the uh, chat, uh, feel free to ask them, and uh, we will answer them. We'll keep trying to, try to keep everything a little focused towards Synergy, uh, but if you have something that's off the wall, uh, we may even answer that today. We shall see. Uh, so as we all know, Synergy is the... Is the uh, putting together of the console and the media server, uh, with uh, AI media server uh, particularly, and uh, Titan, and having worked together like nobody else really can since they don't own a console and a media server, whereas we own both at Avalites and are able to put them together uh, to make things much easier as well as pretty freaking cool. Uh, I said we talked about my use cases uh, this morning. Uh, Sam, what is uh, some of your use cases that you've used uh, Synergy for that doesn't necessarily involve uh, Lightmap? Oh, there have been a couple now. Um, most probably prominently, actually, we ended up playing, we played a little bit with Lightmap at Boomtown, but we actually ended up just using uh, more of the bits and pieces that were a little bit more useful to me in that situation, which was mostly things like uh, the video multi-view and then on a, a theater tour over the Christmas period, uh, didn't use any light map at all, but actually just had uh, Synergy for our entire control. We had a fully projection mapped set. So we used Synergy to control all of that through uh, a queue list with all of our lighting cues as well. Nice, nice. That was quite fun. What do you find uh, the most useful feature of Synergy? Uh, for for you and I've actually have some pictures here that uh, you sent me. Uh, we can throw up there also. I think these are from Boomtown. Yeah, there's a few from Boomtown there. Uh, the the multi view was really useful at Boomtown just because I had uh, all the server guys and the video guys on the other side of front of house, and it was just one of those. I'd like to see what they've got going on so I can keep an eye on things. So that was kind of useful. As we talked about this morning, content upload was really useful pre-touring so that I could basically get the content I needed from uh, my rendering guy and stick it straight into the server, which just made life easy. Yeah, yeah. Media browser is definitely handy. But actually, the realistically, the just the control aspect of it and being able to program queue listing and lighting fixtures like along with all of my video content in one easy hit was probably the most useful touring option I had media server wise compared with pretty much anything else. Nice, nice. It's uh... been a lot of things. I, I everything about Synergy to me is is a useful and actually quite practical development. Agreed, agreed. I, I, I was saying, I was saying this morning, uh, things are so much easier uh, with it than they were uh, before. Oh, absolutely. I've, uh, I've had, uh, I've had another media server. Actually, this was the the third year of me doing this particular tour. Third, uh, first year we didn't use a media server at all. Second year we had a Resolume server out on the tour, which did the job, um, but for what I wanted with the more detailed projection mapping and the more detailed control I was after, the option for Synergy, and it was just after version 12 had come out that we went out on the road, so I was really keen to get it out on that. Nice, nice. Let's see here we got... Kato Vision! 
Yes, the Cato Vision server. Uh, I love that particular name. It makes everybody giggle when they see it on the network. <laughs> like, Cato Vision, what's that? I'm like, that's my media server. They're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's actually it's hooked up. You're streaming out of your eyes over NDI. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's oh. uh, uh, trying to think here of, of the questions you asked me this morning, and I'm spacing out on them right now. <laughs> um, I'm so busy answering them, I forgot to, to write them down as I asked them. Uh, or as I answer them, I mean. Um, for uh, for you, as, as the, like you said, the media browser, you, have, you find that, the, that for the ones you've done, people are handing you stuff just last second like that? Oh, big time. Uh, there's not been many, uh, unlike you, I haven't had many chances to use it on necessarily a corporate setting, but I have found, even from a pre-production aspect, like I've I received content when I was actually out on the road, we got some extra content sh stuck into the show, and being able to basically stick that straight in on-site pre-show day was a bit of a godsend. Yeah. It, uh, I, I, I noticed with it, it's just, it, it's so much easier than doing it in the past. And especially with having to update with CITP. I don't know if you had as bad as luck with CITP as I seem to have, always have. Yeah, I've not, I was kind of lucky to be honest. I managed to get away without having to really delve into CITP until sort of this period of time, just as version 12 was coming along. So I haven't had to really fight it so much, but then having seen it post sort of the release of synergy and seen it post all the stuff I've been doing with it. I'm on that train of mind of, I'm really quite pleased. I didn't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it, it's supposed to be good, but it, uh, yeah, I never had the I had I had the absolute worst luck of it. I would spend hours trying to make it work. Right. And suddenly, even though I'd done the same thing I'd done over three times, it would suddenly work. Oh, <laughs> and then, but I, mean, I don't know what I did to make it start working. It would just start working, and then magically it would stop again at some point in time. Oh no! Yeah, it's, yeah. It's one actually recently. Uh, I spent some time out in South America dealing with a, with a festival out there. The uh, the LD for that festival was uh, a rival console user, but he was a really big fan of AI itself. Um, so he was using uh, a Q3 for all of his visual work, but uh, an MQ500 for his console control. Okay. And it was the the biggest gripe that he had uh, with with his console was that using CITP, he was struggling to see uh, the previews and and what he needed to from having the Q3 so far away to, uh, to the point where he lost his CITP previews. Uh, during the show uh, and because of that he assumed that the Q3 had gone down so it came you know legging it over from front of house without the knowledge of what was going on from from his system and wasn't able to see any of the previews going on yeah comes legging it over uh, the guy was an absolutely lovely chap but uh, neither of us could speak each other's language so we, we were both I was sort of staring at the AI server going what's wrong, what's wrong? I can't see anything wrong here He's staring at me going, what's going on? Uh, and eventually I managed to get through to uh, some of the chaps who were translating for us. And they basically went, oh, yeah, he just couldn't see what was happening, got worried and came running over. And I was like, crikey, if, that, if, that had, if I'd been like that mid-show, I'd have been in absolute panic stations. Right. So I completely sympathized. And we did have quite a long chat afterwards. And we discussed things like uh, having a second machine with NDI tools on it if he's continuing down the road of console use that he probably is. But uh, by the end of that week, we were really quite deeply talking about building synergy into some of the bigger festivals out in South America over the next couple of years, which should be quite interesting. Definitely. That will be uh, uh, quite nice to have it down there. You know, South America has been coming up and up and up in the touring world, and they've always been uh, fairly into Avalites down there uh, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. They've they've always been. I mean, there was the first. We were out uh, in Chile. We were doing some work with the distributor out there, um, and and the chaps over there were using sapphires for the first time uh, for all the TV lighting. So all the big broadcast lights were all sapphire controlled, which was great. And then the Q3 
was running all the headlining visuals, which was even better. And it was like, all we need to do is just the, the more live event stuff. If we can show them how great the systems are, then we could, you know, have a, a wicked AVO system across this whole mad festival, which was great fun. Very nice, very nice. So do you want me to uh, play that little video you sent me uh, earlier? I think I have that up in the queue here. If I... Yeah, go for it. This yeah, it was just the, uh, the little promo video from, from AVO about, about what we ended up getting up to at Boomtown. We had uh, a few bits of AVO knocking around on that festival. There's a few um, few bits and pieces going on. We had, uh, we had our Q3 playing. We had uh, several AVO consoles around the festival. <laughs> I turned it down earlier and apparently turned back up. So to all the 12 people watching slash listening, you're going to be just watching from now on. <laughs> yes, yes, sorry. I blew all of your ears out. Uh, <laughs> Everyone is deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Really, really exciting festival for Boomtown was, and always is. I'm pretty gutted to hear it uh, this morning that it's been cancelled, obviously, for 2020. Yeah, that's what I had seen that uh, uh, in the uh, around on uh, uh, Facebook th today that that apparently had gone uh, wonky for you all, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, we can we can look at it as more time to prepare and more ridiculous things to do, which is always fun. Yeah. I think now we've got an image up of your uh, Christmas tour thing with a looks like a window pane. Uh, if I remember right, you talking about so you shot the uh, video through the window panes, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so everything was rear projected onto the set. You can see it's in three segments here. So I took uh, the video source and we mapped in three um, three segments across each part of this set. So the whole set was projection mapped. And then I ran content through uh, the whole queue list throughout the set. You can see this this shattered effect was one of the uh, one of the inbuilt AI effects running with some extra content along the back, and we used that really quite a lot throughout the tour for the for most of our backdrops. That's cool. That's a uh, that's a ha handy way to uh, handle backdrop stuff is with uh, using the video uh, the, the video backdrop like that and uh, using AI to send it to it. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit different, a little bit, a little bit exciting. We had some, we had some live footage as well. So we had, you can see those school tables uh, all there. We we had some performers come in, sit at those tables, and and react to performers on stage, which was quite cool. Quite a nice way of integrating the video in. Ah, definitely. That that sounds very cool. Oh, we got to blow it up as well. That was even more fun. <laughs> Good way to. Uh, uh... To end the show, I assume, or something close to oh, that. Oh, absolutely. About about the midway point, um, we just demolished the whole whole of the backdrop set uh, on video. Get to blow <laughs> some things up. It's always good fun. Nice, nice. Uh, let's see here. No, no real questions other than uh, Ollie asking is every time I say nice, nice, they should drink. Uh, may, maybe today. Maybe that's the <laughs> the drinking games is we're not doing a lot of screen switching. I can't mess that up. Any, I guess we'll do it on every time I say nice, nice. Ah, um, uh, seems fair. <laughs> oh, well, the drinking games are getting a little out of control on us here. I think <laughs> it's just uh, anyone needs an excuse to drink. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Makes for good times, though, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think. Uh, um, just while while we've got these these images up, it's worth pointing out uh, the tour I was doing there was not uh, it wasn't a high budget tour. We weren't looking at you know spending thousands and thousands of pounds. We weren't touring into particularly large venues, uh, but we did decide to go with the server and the projection route, which for a lot of small tours I think can be a little bit daunting, a little bit intimidating, uh, but actually ended up meaning we were able to do a lot more with a lot less really use the budget that we had and the content that we made to make that so much more of, of the sort of performance that we were dealing with rather than just, you know, some projected backdrops. We kind of went for a little bit more of a real live vibe to it, which ended up saving us quite a bit in, in budget, which meant we had a little bit more for fixtures to play with. And even then we were going into pokey little venues 
in some areas, you know, very small cap. And we're still able to deliver that level of immersion without spending loads of money and without having to compromise any of the aspects of the show. So if anyone is thinking about using the system on something that's coming up, I know Ollie from the chat is debating this very, very thing at the moment. It's totally accessible, even if you're looking at the, the smaller end of the budget, the smaller venue size, it's still worth having to think about it because there's a lot of creative bits and pieces you can put into what you use, not necessarily just throwing content around for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't hurt that, especially when dealing with smaller physical sized uh, venues that short throw and ultra short throw projectors are, are a lot brighter than they used to be just a few years ago. Yeah, it's coming a long way. Yeah, that's that's very nice for being able to, uh, uh, you know, to have not have to take up a lot of uh, stage depth with making a projection like that happen. Uh, you know, I've I've done that in the past in tours, many many moons ago, where we had to basically make our own short th short throw projector using a standard projector in a reflection box, and uh, shorten the throw out of it. You know took the space at least that it took take to through it a lot smaller you know using like a three foot square mirror shooting the projector at that and shooting that at the uh screen oh um, yeah it uh yeah, of course you lose a lot of a lot of lumens when you do that but it, <laughs> hey it worked <laughs> did the job it does the job yes yes there is so much out there now I, i'm really quite pleased with the fact that it synergy itself has really opened up to Gen general Titan and lighting programmers, the the ability to actually start thinking about the video side of things and start t turning their creative juices, let's say, onto stuff that isn't necessarily just what what pretty gobo and what pretty look can I make? What can I do to take that that area of what I do and integrate it in with something that can be so unbelievably unique looking looking at something like eric prince's shows where it's so unbelievably immersive and that's obviously an ai used system and integrating that between everything that that show has going on is like the more we push towards that the more creative i think this industry is going to become yeah agreed agreed do you find yourself uh using more of with, with Synergy in mind, using the console to set things up rather than uh, doing it through the server's interface? Quite a lot, yeah. Um, other than dealing with things that are a little bit more in-depth, like the actual mapping side of stuff, where I've got to deal with multiple segments, multiple sections and regions, which obviously is something I'm going to probably want to be dealing with the server for anyway. When it comes to actually controlling what I've got going on, what content's going where, I am living on the Titan side of things. I love being able to dive into easy bits and pieces that I'm super familiar with, like the attribute editor, like palettes, like the effect engines that I know, and being able to take those and just do what I normally would, but do it with something that's not necessarily a moving head. Yeah. There's um, a love, well, the lovely synergy room we have. Uh, at Averlights HQ UK, we've just started experimenting with um, or playing with the new Pioneer uh, DJ Link stuff. And I've been using in that room a little bit of that and a little bit of synergy and being able to create effects with the video content with light, with light map running to a beat from the Pioneer DJ Link has suddenly meant, oh, I can take everything like this. I can take that full clubbing environment that's starting to engage with video wall a little bit more, starting to engage with what AI and media service can offer, linking that with what every single club in every single place has, which is a bunch of CDJs and DJMs, and taking all that information, and suddenly I've got a completely integrated show. Now that's awesome to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've got uh, uh, you know have the proper uh, pioneer stuff and being able to do that with the the uh, the, the DJ link is going to be proper great. Uh, when you got it all set up, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. Thanks to COVID-19, it's been hard for me to get my hands on uh, uh, a pair of tables to bring them into the intermission control here and have a have a go at it. But hopefully, uh, get around that soon enough and get some in here and have a have a good old time poking at it for a little while. 
it's hard, hard enough for me. I, I go to, well, even before COVID-19, I was going to people and say, oh, can I borrow some CDJs? And they go, CDJs? You don't deal with CDJs. You're a lighting guy. <laughs> yeah, it does give you kind of strange. Like, Why do you want turntables and a mixer? Like, well, you see, what happened was. <laughs> yeah, so much of it. Please don't start DJing, Sam. Please don't start DJing. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we were. I was trying. I was trying to find someone. We were still in beta, so you know, you, you you don't talk about anything. So, you know, I'm posting on my Facebook. Hey, anyone got some of these? You can borrow. And people are like, why the hell do you want that? <laughs> uh, I, for some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I decided I want to burn all my classical vinyl to CD, and I'm going to use a CDJ to play them all. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, yeah, just never time. He didn't work out too many classes and too much other work, and didn't have time to uh, have a proper go at it. But hopefully, soon enough. You know, it uh, some definitely fun stuff there. Yeah, it's it's one of the reasons I absolutely adore what Avo has been doing for for many years, but particularly recently is just that that focus on integrating the the whole of the entertainment field being able to sort of marry up all all these different aspects of things that have quite traditionally been fairly separate and bringing it all under this amazing banner of, of creativity and, and integration where we can now have such a beautifully seamless performance with so little effort it's oh it's just great fun yeah yeah it, it so much easier you know like i was saying uh saying this morning that the AI interface itself can feel relatively intimidating uh, from a lighting guy standpoint. Uh, it's it's not like any console. It's not like any you know anything that we usually deal with, and it gets super intimidating. But when with, with Synergy and the way how it's putting it into the console so much, there's that, that intimidation factor is just gone. Yeah, you know, it, it's easier to get into the media server because of that because it's at that point from the console standpoint and, and media servers always kind of been this way but it's even extra so with this energy that it's just another fixture now it's not some mysterious piece of equipment we're trying to, to integrate in our show and pulling our hair out while we're trying to do it it's just patch it you know patch the synergy hook the uh the, the console up through the synergy settings and program it just you know record the record anything out like you would anything else you know record the the clips and the uh uh, clips and JPEGs and audio and whatever else you're using on it, you just record it like their Kobo colors and gobos and anything else, you know. Yeah, and I should, I should say, I think, um, I think what um, the guys in the AI dev team have done, not just Aaron but Terry and Kieran and several of the other chaps who have been really working on that user interface in AI. If you are, you know, concerned as a, as a lighting guy to look at AI, it's become i mean from the days of your when i mean i know aaron's delved into salvation where you can get unbelievably in depth with with what's going on but you can now come out of that and look at a user interface which actually looks quite sensible and quite easy to look at and deal with and it's now building to that point where the ease of use and ease of access is becoming very very friendly as well with just the ai side of things and then being able to bring all of that across is it's becoming the sort of mesh of of loveliness that I've I've always wanted to see and always wanted to be able to to play with, and that's why I'm loving AI more and more every day. Yeah, it, it, the power of it runs runs him so very very deep, uh, you know. And I only I've only scratched the surface of it playing with it on some of my shows. Uh, you know, like I was saying this morning, I have a uh, one of the things they do during that show is I uh, have it runs daily. So, you know, it lists off what it's going on every day in every different venue uh, on the complex. And uh, so it's got to change every night because obviously what's going on in, you know, building A is different today than it was yesterday. Mm. And uh, I have, have a salvation patch set up that it will automatically change at midnight all on this lonesome. I don't have to look at it, touch it. I set it up at the start of the show and, and tell it what folder to look at, and every day it'll change to the net whatever date, uh, whatever uh, artnet uh, number is given to each particular file. Just switches to that one at midnight for that day. So on the fifteenth it nice. changes to clip fifteen. On the sixteenth it changes to clip sixteen. Yada yada yada. So the only thing I have to do is make sure I send the assign the right artnet number to the right clip, and there you go, problem solved. Great. 
That's great. Yeah. Something I, I didn't really touch upon um, over the last sort of today and yesterday, I haven't shown a great deal of sticking something like light map in a queue list. I don't know if we want to do a quick little bash through that while we've got a few people watching who might be interested in playing with it some more. I think we could probably do that. So if we kick over here to our mobile. And let's see here. We can just cheat and use a queue list I already have going here. Nice. And we'll throw up a scene or two. And we'll also put up the full version of Capture so we can actually see what we're doing in uh, AI. Awesome. So if we were to select our, our AI layer and we'll throw a locate on it. And we'll bring up the... Let's see here. Look at the chaos because these are my favorite clips, and I don't know why, but they these are definitely my most favorite of the clips. Yeah, there's some great stock content that comes with AI. I do like a bit of the chaos. Yeah, yeah. In general, not just in, in video clips. Yeah. Well, I you miss know, the <laughs> chaos. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that there, and we'll go to our synergy layout, and we'll do. Uh, let's see here. Let's throw locate them to the point in there. And we'll see, we'll go to beam, zoom them down, and we'll actually just select these and throw a wee bit of tilt on them. About there, I shot to do it. Nice. We select everything, shapes and effects, pixel mapper, create effect. Whoop, that's not right. Oh, because I selected the layer, not the. Uh, uh, that is a mistake I've made a few times before. <laughs> We've got them right next to each other in, in synergy layout, synergy layer. I, I Synergy L, click that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now let's yeah. go to the right uh, the right effect. There we go. Whoops, this, one, this one's really here. Let's we'll see if we can clear. There we go. And we'll hit our plus button and AI and our black hole sun and choose our surface zero. And we can see that that is playing right along for us. And we go ahead and bring back up our uh, cue list here. And we can do record Q1 and merge. And then, do, 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 yep, it should be on there as I thought it would be. And then we'll. Let's see here. We'll just keep it up here. And we'll choose our layer. We'll choose a different clip. Nice. Oh, it's gonna do my I can, I can say nice, nice now. People can start drinking. <laughs> yes, there you go. You can say nice, nice instead, and then they can all drink. Let's see here. We'll make it nice and green, just because we know how much I love doing the green. <laughs> Let's see here, we'll put it on, we'll put it in Q6, why not, or actually no, Q, we'll do it on this one. Because it's completely clashing and that's what makes it awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying we'll merge it in there, <laughs> we'll exit and clear it, and then we'll double tap release to release all active playbacks. And now we'll see how that worked into our cue list, as we can see there, it uh, just plays straight into it. And of course, oops, uh, we go, uh, actually apparently, oh yeah, sorry, that's what's on Q2 of this cue list, is that one, which is actually, so I actually already had some uh, some light mapping stuff in here. Excellent. That I had uh, forgotten that I had. This is, this is one of those great things. Again, it follows the, the standard cue list principles you can get content to move in dark that's a oh that was an awesome thing being able to do that uh, on a touring show being able to go right okay i've got a scene coming up where this building needs to explode right okay well in that case i'll have on layer three that that clip for this scene but i'll get it to move in dark so i know as soon as i start this scene 
that clip is ready to go. So as soon as I was ready to hit the blackout, which was one of those things where you're kind of never going to know when the cue is going to hit. It's one of those things where the actors sort of play off the band a little bit and you're kind of waiting for that moment of, right, here we go, got to fire that clip off. I knew straight away that on layer three, that clip was ready to go. It had moved in dark. It was already at that particular piece of media. So as soon as I dropped everything down to zero, all I needed to do was bring up the intensity of layer three, which was in the queue list in my blackout queue. And that thing was already exploding in the video. All I needed to do was show people, which meant that it, every single night that queue hit every single time that the actors gave me that kind of moment to hit it. Yeah, yeah. Really useful little bit of programming. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, it's not it, when you have it in the queue. It's just to show it everybody. You can obviously, since it's a pixel map effect, it's under the view pixel effect uh, column here. So if we were to uh, look at the uh, one we did in queue, uh, one of it, we can see what we have here. You know, all the stuff that we're from uh, from that pixel map and uh, what group it was made with. In this case, the Synergy Layout Group. Uh, so we could, you know, if we needed to view that group and edit it for some reason, uh, we could since everything's done on group layouts uh, for Synergy and, and Pixel Mapper in general, it's all about the group layout, you know. Exactly. Getting these fundamentals in your heads, as we talked, as Gordon did, and uh, you did a great uh, pair of videos on Tuesday about getting these group layouts all sorted out. And obviously we've looked at things like uh, the video overlay and all that sort of stuff. Being able to cover all of that, get that fundamental layout and sort of, design work straight away just as a general rule of thumb if you're going to play with synergy you know the moment you start throwing content around all those layouts are lovely and nicely laid out so you can play with it to your heart's content and you're not really going to have any major issues yeah yeah it it with the layout making it so easy like i just did uh here on screen you guys may have seen me doing it while sam was talking uh because i added in these uh x bars uh the other day i hadn't updated this queue list uh to do it so all i had to do since they were in the same group was literally all i had to do was turn up their intensity and then record it to the queue to add those x4 bars into this queue since it was already pre-recorded and that's one of the great things about uh the, it's a particular feature of titan that basically anything that's used any any features added to a group for an effect are automatically added to that effect. You just have to turn them up so you can see them. Because obviously, unless it happens to be a intensity uh, shape, you're going to have to go in and turn intensity on so that they're uh, visible. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting one. I like that one as well. I, I, I love playing with keyframes and video content as well. That's another thing I love to mess around with. I don't think I've done that any yet. Uh, what exactly? What do you usually do when you're uh, poking like that? It was. Uh, I, I was enjoying playing with this once again. I was. I was messing around with the Pioneer DJ Link stuff, and they had a really nice uh, bit of content that actually a really friendly touring LD had come in and was having a play with himself. And he said, "Oh, what would you do with this?" And basically, we were we were taking. It was quite a nice um, sort of pulse out kind of effect. I, I'm doing hand movements like anyone can see me, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was it was a really nice sort of chaotic. Um, beamed out kind of um i'd call it like light drawing you know where you kind of have the shaded um beams just spreading out from center so i had that going on and i took a keyframe shape and i used the zoom function of the layer to just go from sort of static zero percent zoom into kind of double the size double the zoom uh, and out again and then using that, I, I stuck that keyframe on the BPM master, which was linked to Pioneer, so that every time I triggered this playback, the clip started sort of bouncing in and out to the beat, which was okay. quite cool. It was quite an interesting way of just playing with that. I had it on a snap in and then a, a fade out, so it was just pulsing in and zooming back out, pulsing in, zooming back out to the beat every every single time I fired that playback off. Okay. Just okay. something a little bit a little bit different, a little bit potentially unconventional. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I like the idea. Almost, I, I now, now that you got me thinking with that. Now that I think that's almost a a way you could make uh, uh, the the classic VU meter that everyone's always yeah. asking for. You'd be done uh, using that. Uh, you, you along those lines, it could be interesting poked at uh, there. I think 
I'm gonna have to I have to play with that at some point. It's good fun. It's one of the um, one of the actual cool things. I don't know if Aaron has delved massively into yet. Is the um, it's the stuff where obviously Notch has now become a really kind of big uh, player in the 3D content generation thing. But when we had when Notch wasn't really a thing, we had the whole um, dynamic uh, effects patches, which are still in, in AI and still able to be uh, plugged in and used. And those dynamic uh, dynamic patches were reactive to certain things. So the, the devs of AI had certain bits and pieces that were already sound reactive. If you if you set AI to listen to a certain certain audio card or a certain incoming feed, you can actually get the video content to react to sound. So you could have your, your equalizer sort of um, graphic going on and you could have sound reactive stuff to make that work. You could then add that into your light mapped content and you've got a really nice integration between that big sort of pulse up with your VU meter or your big spread out with your kind of spider's web of beam to then fly across your whole fixtures every time a big drop hit or something like that. Well, that's a good one. I like that. You can tell I've played with this far too much, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why you're starting to become the resident uh, uh, Synergy expert, is you spend too much time playing with it. <laughs> synergy something or other. I don't know if that's what they call me in the office. They call synergy, me something. Synergy pain in the, he's such a nice guy. Uh, that's no. the one, yeah. That's why, that's why I don't go over software very often. I think they'd kill me. <laughs> well, that's because you like to break things. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> breaking brains and breaking things. <laughs> well, uh, everyone seems to be a little quiet in the uh, question department today. We're, there's a, just a few of you out there. But if you guys have any questions on uh, you know, anything Synergy-related or even non-Synergy-related at this point, uh, we'll take just about any question we've got there. Uh, we'll give you guys a minute or two to uh, try to catch up to us and ask uh, said questions but if not we'll uh, probably just end up signing out for the day uh, it's, it's lovely to have um, a few of the regulars in nice to see nigel on the chat and neil nice to see you and uh, mr warren has joined us this evening so, yes uh, i saw that welcome welcome to you steve it's nice to have you with us it's nice to nice to talk about synergy some more because as you know i i love it and being able to chat about it for a whole week has actually been kind of good for me right and yeah, as he says, yeah, great to see a bit of Boomtown once again. Hopefully we can ride that wave into 2021 and have a bit more fun with that one. Yeah, yeah. Because really, God knows I need a festival soon. I, I think we all do. Just I'd take just about any show right now. Yeah. I just, oh, did, uh, oh, just, just to get out. I, I, I want to, you know, being a trainer and being stuck at home and not seeing you know, a dozen new LDs every other week has been, uh, I've been kind of tough. I'm tired of not seeing smiling faces and getting to learn them in the ways of Avo. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, as, as the primary getting out and training people, it's kind of sad that we can't, can't go out and see faces and show people some mad stuff. Yeah. We've got all the stuff we've been doing online, but you know, it's not, not quite the same as, as kind of getting out and seeing a bit of the world and seeing a bit of the people doing some really awesome stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, you know, it, it will, it's so much harder to teach when everyone can't see my hand waving. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a genuine struggle being, not being able to, to show all the ridiculous things that my hands do when I'm, when I'm talking about stuff like, yeah, I clearly get far too passionate. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, we do have a question. Uh, Mr. Ollie that asks, uh, what's the benefits of AI and Synergy over QLab? Uh, I don't have much experience with QLab uh, myself. You want to feel that, sir? Yeah, I've, as I've I sort of, I've had a play with QLab over a few periods of my life. And... Um, it's a very, very useful, and it's an industry standard for a reason. But I would say that the integration with what we've got going on with Synergy, the ability to control a great deal more of the parameters that are being dealt with by the video content, the really powerful mapping tools that you have in AI over pretty much almost anything else at this point, you know, the AI's mapping is a really, really powerful tool. And if you are doing special stuff with multi-projectors or multi-camera feeds, that's going to be 
uh, a real benefit of using AI. QLab is obviously great for running a sequential series of things, and there's some awesome plugins out there for it. But I would say from a from a touring perspective, QLab is probably a little bit too convoluted and doing slightly too many jobs for my taste. I like to be able to have two really powerful dedicated systems that realistically I can make one operate without the other if I needed to. I can have that separation if I wanted to actually go away from having the two controlled together. Say, for example, you expand up into a slightly larger format of touring and you might want to have a dedicated video operator who still has all of that synergy control and the likelihood is that they probably will want it. Just being able to have access to it in a really nice, friendly format that Titan offers you is to me something I really quite like. I've, I've played with QLab quite a bit and there's definitely some really powerful things it can do. I just find personally the interface and the ease of use for me was not, obviously being a very, very Titan based human being, that might have had something to do with it, but I love the integration. I love the light mapping. I love the, the video mapping that AI can do and just that real ease of control playing with it over playing with QLab I found was was really straightforward and there's so much other integration now with titan as well as we've said with reaper with midi with usb midi all these things are sort of coming together in in one very very easy to use sort of circumstance and that for me is why i pretty much use that kind of setup for most touring applications doesn't uh and uh, not to insult anyone that's a qlab lover or qlab itself but isn't qlab more playback oriented rather than manipulative like like ai is taking the, the yeah, content is just something to start with not the end all be all of it yeah I'd, I'd i'd agree with that i think um definitely from what i've heard about where qlab sort of came from it was definitely more of a kind of playback management and management of stuff you just had to get out there not necessarily manipulating it in any particularly major way and what we, what you can do with AI is obviously far deeper and, and more controlled than, than that, just throwing things out there. You can spit things like MIDI and, and ACN out of QLab, and I have seen it be used quite effectively with systems where you might not necessarily have um, a fully integrated setup, but you might be using lots and lots of different things from lots of brands with lots of different settings on it. And QLab is quite good for that sort of central hub of being able to throw things like MIDI triggers and that all across the board. Okay. But again, it's sort of you're sort of losing that that deep level of control and the manipulation of it in a way that might be needed across different venues. Being able to change my region settings, for example, and being able to load up eight different dynamic region maps in AI made touring into various different depths of stage and different venues into a matter of minutes as opposed to a matter of hours. That was a huge advantage for me. True, true. Yeah, that uh, uh, would definitely make it easier. And like you were saying earlier, if you know if it grows, uh, you know one thing nice about keeping it in tight and synergy and all that is that if you grow and need to add a video guy, you can just put a, another console on the network, put, tighten that, tighten that uh, session it in, and you don't even give up any control for, as being the main guy. You just get a guy helping out over there on that console. Yeah, you know. So if you need to have stuff fired from a specific queue list and you know, rather than hoping he's on time, you can just fire it from the main console. Absolutely. You know, if it's, I love, I love all that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely would make that easier, but, uh, it looks like, uh, we are, uh, go ahead and cut it for today. So it doesn't look like there's any other questions and there's, uh, <laughs> there's four people watching. I think two of them are you and I, uh, Quite so... possibly. <laughs> but it's nice, it's just nice to discuss this. And if, if people, you know, come back to this at a later date, maybe when our lockdown is over, we can reshare this so that people who have been interested in synergy, but obviously not, not considered it at the right time or the right place for them at the moment, they can have another look at this. And, uh, as Corey says, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, some of the AI videos, some of the streams Aaron has done are awesome. He has taken you through so many things that I didn't even know about half the time. So oh, yeah. they're oh, definitely yeah. worth paying attention to. Yes, that they are for sure. 
So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and start our sign out. So uh, as usual, we can always find uh, all of our uh, streams uh, that we're doing here in the U.S. on the uh, avalites.us slash training events HTML page. Uh, the middle one there is the uh, Avalites USA YouTube, which is to be going up on shortly. Uh, and, of course, the uh, main Avalites uh, YouTube is uh, youtube.com slash Avalites Viz, V-I-S. Uh, and, of course, we've got the Avalites.com slash online resources, where uh, all the stuff that uh, you're doing uh, over there in the U.K. is listed, as well as any sessions that Aaron's doing uh, to get your learn yeah. on when it comes to that uh all of that AI stuff where that rabbit hole runs so very deep and it can, uh, I don't want to say tired to scary, but, uh, sometimes I get a little lost and confused, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is, it is definitely, uh, not hard, just stuff to learn. So yeah, with that, sure. uh, thank you for joining us, Sam. And, uh, what is your session tomorrow? Exactly. Tomorrow, I think we're going to wrap up Synergy Week by hopefully, if I can get them all involved, pulling in uh, as many members of the training team as possible. And we'll do a little bit of a round table with just some general questions, some Synergy stuff, wrapping up the whole of the week with, with a little bit of a bigger bang, if I can get away with it. Yeah, all right. All right. That sounds like fun for sure. And we'll figure out what we're going to do on the U.S. stream uh, sometime tomorrow. I'll figure that out. Uh, <laughs> sounds good. I might, I might drag uh, you and maybe Mr. Brad in again, and uh, uh, we'll just have some fun with it. And, you know, maybe we'll do yours on the – getting all the trainers drug in. Maybe I'll try to drag as many sales guys as I can in and uh, make them talk. Absolutely. So, that sounds like fun. They, that's what they love to do, isn't it? Talk? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and with that, we'll go ahead and sign out, and we'll catch you guys again next time. Thanks for uh, coming out. See you guys soon. Wheel stop. Roger, wheel stop, Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning.